Shall we all stand if you're able to? God is good all the time. In spite of the trials and crosses, the tribulation and sorrows, Jesus gives us a break from it by way of the cross. He said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Can the church just shout the name of Jesus? Jesus. Let me hear you lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down, he's worthy to be praised. And here we are this morning to worship and to lift up his name. Let us join with the songwriter. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to see that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together wonderful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Light of the world. Here I am to 
and glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In times like this, we need Jesus more than ever. Oh, hallelujah. We need Jesus in the morning. We need Jesus in the evening. We need Jesus at noontime. Oh, we need him every time. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your precious name. Give me Jesus in the morning, give me Jesus in the evening, oh, every minute of the day, give me Jesus, give me Jesus in the morning, give me Jesus in the evening, oh, every minute of the day, give me Jesus, yes, he's my reason for living. Jesus in the morning, yes, sir. Give me Jesus in the evening. Oh, he's my source of 
Hallelujah! Are there some worshipers on the earth? Are there some worshipers in David? Come on now, lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only believe in Jesus' name. That was just a taste of what the concert is going to be. So if I were you, I would get my tickets today. All right? At this time, I'll welcome the choir who's going to minister to us.
Shall we all stand while we welcome Bishop F.A.B. Center to the podium, please, for the word. I want to bring your attention for a few minutes to a portion of God's word. And this morning it will not be preaching, but I am going to be like a teacher, like a real teacher. So this morning I'm going to be your professor. And I'll be reading just a portion of what was being read for our devotion. It is Romans chapter 8. For those of you who are worshiping with us electronically and you were not on, we read from Romans chapter 8, and the entire chapter was being read. I want to bring your attention to a few verses, particularly it's going to be the last segment of verse 9. But I'll be bringing your attention from the verse 6, and you don't be in a hurry. Verse 6, Romans chapter 8. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot Please God. Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. And this is what I want you to note. Now, now, this last clause of this verse 9. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I'd like you to change the man there to one. If anyone, bless you ladies, believe you are so special, you're not including, eh? If now, if anyone have not the spirit of Christ, he or she is none of his. Father, we ask that you'll breathe in these words and let us apply them to our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the thought that I want to leave it to, leave it to now, like I tell you that I was in, impregnated with this particular text, which I'd never preached ever since I've been preaching for 60 odd years. My memory serves me right. But a few, maybe about a week or two ago, early morning, I was visited by the heavenly visitant. And he has authorized me to expound this particular text to you. And there's somebody particularly that God wants to speak to. And if you notice my term, God wants to speak to you not with you. But speaking to and speaking with are two different things. So he wants to speak to you concerning your, your relationship with him. And I'd like to read this final clause again of verse 9 of Romans 8. Now, if anyone have not the spirit of Christ, he or she is none of his. My brothers and sisters, I beg your righteous indulgence for a couple of minutes. As I have discovered that the great exponent, the great exponent of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is the essential deity of the Holy Spirit in the life and ministry of Christ our Lord and in extension in the lives and ministry of the believers. And since this is a foundation, I'd like to repeat this. 
especially for those who are worshiping electronically, that you can grasp the synergy or the substance of what God the Holy Spirit has laid upon my heart. God the Holy Spirit has impregnated me with this message. And I give birth this morning, comes what may. Now, if anyone have not the spirit of Christ, he or she is none of his. Are you belonging to him? You're worshiping, you're singing, and you're giving your tithes and your offering and your fellowshipping. You're a member of this church. Are you a member of Christ's church? I feel like I'd want to holler. For there are so many of us as preachers who think we, we are belonging to Christ. When in truth and fact we are not. Because we have not the spirit of Christ. Now if anyone. Any person. Has not the spirit of Christ. He or she is not belonging to Christ. The great exponent of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Is the essential deity of the Holy Spirit. In the life and ministry of Christ our Lord. And in extension in the life and ministry of every one of us as children of God. And Christ our Lord is the true foundation on which we may build with profound confidence all our hope for eternity. If our hope, our expectation for eternity is not built on Christ, it's out. Christ is a rock in our weary land. And our land is really weary. Yes, this land in which you and I live really weary. I believe if some of us parents should come back, they would ask God to take them immediately. Uh, I was talking with the Lord the other day and I said, Master, I don't know if you're looking below, but if you're looking below, it's worse now than when you walked on earth. It's rough down here. And every day you listen to the news, it's rougher. Do you understand me? But Christ is a rock in our weary land and is a shelter in the time of storm. And really, we are having storms, aren't we? Shelter in the time of storms. Ah, yes, he is. Christ is our rock. We know in whom we have believed. And we are persuaded that he is able to keep what we have committed unto him and to grant what we have asked him for. Isn't he? Being possessed by the Holy Spirit is the very essence. And I'd like you to grasp this. Don't let it go. Being possessed by the Holy Spirit is the very essence of the new life in Christ. And this is life eternal. The spirit of God is the supreme element of the human complex nature. The spirit of God is the supreme element of the human complex nature. The body is led by the spirit. The body cannot go anywhere without the spirit. So which spirit leading you? The spirit of God is a supreme. And I'd like to grab this. Because I was startled as I was lectured to by the Holy Spirit. The spirit of God is a supreme and established dominion over the flesh. According to God's word. 
This is why it was told many thousands of years back that God is a spirit. And anyone who is going to worship God must worship him in spirit. It doesn't matter how you feed the flesh. You cannot worship God in the flesh because the God who you worship is a spirit. The spirit of God is a supreme and established dominion over the flesh according to God's divine plan. And listen to me. God communicates to human only through the spirit. That's the way he communicates to you and me. Through the spirit. God communicates to you man through his spirit. And so the true essence of Christianity is inevitably the reigning influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I'm going to count my words for the rest of time I'm here. And so in light of all that I have already said. Let us examine again the very profound utterance of our text. According to Romans 8 and the last clause of verse 9. Now, if any person do not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Frightening. And saints of God, if we are not his, then whose are we? If we are not Christ, ask yourself the question. Let this question bother you for the rest of the few minutes we have. If we are not belonging to Jesus Christ, who are we belonging to? And where are we going from here? Is it hell or heaven? Think about what I've just said, saints of God. Here goes the Holy Spirit. He's in this text named the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is in this text named the Spirit of Christ. Just as he is called the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus in verse 2 of the text. It is as the Spirit of life. That the Holy Ghost takes possession of the believer and creating in them all the glorious and holy disposition which dwelleth in the Holy Spirit himself. Because we have the Holy Spirit, we will demonstrate as if the Holy Spirit is demonstrating. Do you hear me? Now listen to me. If anyone's heart is void, and may I put, may I say soul also? May I? If anyone's heart or soul is void of the presence of the Holy Spirit, such person is not belonging to Jesus Christ. Such person is not God's property. <laughs> Did you hear me? And this is saying the word, I'm repeating the word of God. If the spirit of God is not dwelling in you, you are not God's property. I, I'd, I'd like to say it again that the spirit of God is the supreme element. The spirit of God is the supreme element. Of our complex nature. You get it? The spirit of God is the supreme element of your complex nature. Uh, the, the spirit of God is the supreme and established dominion over the flesh. 
the spirit of God dwells in you, controls the power of the flesh. So if the power of the flesh wants you to do something that is contrary, the power of the spirit will dominate and take, take position. Uh, uh, listen good to what I have said, that God Almighty ministers to us through, this, through his spirit. Did you hear me? And saints, uh, this is the antecedent of the text. I told you that I was not going to be a preacher uh, because the, this word is only, would have been used only by a teacher. This is the antecedent of the text. You are, are, he is none of his. This is a synergy. This is a substance. This is the antecedent. If the spirit of God is not in you, you are not mine. This is the, this is a message. This is a substance and the synergy and the antecedent. This is a, this is a word. This is a message. Oh, man. Oh, glory to God, somebody. For it is as the spirit of Christ that the Holy Ghost takes position of the believer's lives. Did you hear me? Uh, you see, let me say something further. That uh, Introducing into us all the glorious dispositions of the holy character of the spirit of God. There is somebody in you controlling you. Is it the devil? Or is God? There is a spirit inside of you controlling your behavior. And your conduct. And your whatever. And who is that spirit? Is it the spirit of God? Or the spirit of the devil? Huh? For it, it is as this spirit of Christ that the Holy Spirit takes position in the lives of the believers. Introducing into us all the glorious and gracious dispositions of his holy character. Listen to me. Even though one may be intellectually, I'd like you to grab, grab this one. Even though one may be intellectually convinced of the truth of Christianity and the truth of God's word, without the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, influencing you to worship and service, you are not belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not, this, is, this is a substance of the of the text. Saints of God, having the Holy Spirit's presence dwelling in you, dwelling in us, is what, listen to me good, can I just take my own time? May I please? I said, saints of God, not having the Holy Spirit's presence dwelling in you, is what Bible scholars call fatal spiritual deficiency syndrome. That's why I told you I wasn't, I wasn't going to be a preacher this morning. I'm back in the classroom. I'm, so I, I will repeat this. Saints of God, having the Spirit's presence dwelling in us is the only essence of Christianity. And did you hear me what I said? And I said, not having the Holy Spirit's presence dwelling in us is what Bible scholars and theologians call fatal spiritual deficiency syndrome. Fatal spiritual deficiency syndrome. What is that? In the physical world, it is a disease which is caused by lack of essential dietary elements in your daily meal. You're eating, but you're not, your, oh, your body is not nourishing from what you're eating because you're not eating properly. Too much starch, 
I was like we Jamaican like a lot of starch. Or too much sugar. It's not properly balanced. Fatal spiritual deficiency syndrome. Not having the presence of God in your life. You're worshiping, but you're not worshiping. You're coming to church, but you're not worshiping. Because you're lacking the, the vital essence, amen, and the quality that is to pull you close to God. <laughs> Not having the Holy Spirit. I believe I'm talking to quite a few persons here. Not having the Holy Spirit in your life. Bible scholars and theologians call that spiritual, fatal spiritual deficiency syndrome. And I said in the physical world, it is a disease which is caused by a lack of essential dietary elements. You're not eating, your diet is not right. A lack of essential dietary elements or dietary vitamin. You are not eating properly. You're not worshiping. You wonder why the praise group has to beg some of us to worship. And you are being invited to worship. And you are being pumped to worship. And you are being begged to worship. But you cannot worship because you are lacking that vital substance. That is to allow you to worship. <laughs> and in the physical world it is a disease which is caused by lack of not eating properly. You are not eating rightly. You are not worshiping properly. Lacking the necessary vitamin or mineral in your diet to make you physically healthy will cause you to develop uh, the deficiency syndrome disease that will prevent you from worshiping properly. In the spiritual world, you cannot worship God unless you are having the spirit of God. It is the spirit of God in you that propels you to worship. That's why it doesn't make sense I ask you to worship. If you don't have God's spirit in you, you cannot worship God because God is a spirit. <laughs> You're getting me now. Hallelujah. And Jesus made it abundantly clear to the woman she met. At Jacob's well. He, he, he won as a, he, Jesus was on his last mission to the cross. To the Calvary. Uh, and, but there was a district that he wanted to evangelize. It was Samaria. Uh, and in Samaria there were certain class of women. Who controls Samaria? And anywhere a woman controls you, as a man can go in there. <laughs> now, nah, if a woman run things, you have to stay out. I told some women, who, oh Lord God, it's a certain class of women who control Samaria. And Jesus wanted to conduct his final crusade service before he go to Calvary. And his Samaria ain't want to go to preach. He cannot go in there unless he go through a woman. <laughs> They'll beat him, kill him. He women run the show here. Any, any area, dominion, woman control. Watch yourself going there as a man. But Jesus smart. Amen. He saw one of the main leaders. Amen. Come to the well to draw water. And he said, hi, sweetheart. Give her a drink. He's working, working in way. And you know the story well. And she, she developed the argument and Jesus began to talk. It is revival. Jesus wanted to conduct in Samaria. But he got to convert one woman. And he got one woman converted. And sent her to start the crusade. Hallelujah. And the one woman went in back to Samaria. We under the anointing of Almighty God. And said, come see a man. Come see a man that told me all I'd ever done. Amen. 
Jesus could not go into Samaria to start a crusade. But he, Jesus used a woman. And the woman started the crusade. And that was, where, that was the last crusade that Jesus conducted before he went to Calvary. And he got to use a woman. To, if you can get the woman converted and filled with the spirit of God, there's no powers of hell that can stand before them. And even though you may be very intelligent, very you may be intellectually convinced of the truth of Christianity and with the power of God. Unless you yourself have the spirit of God in you, you are none of his. Can I say something to you? This is very tough and very scary. You may win somebody to Christ and you have not been won. So you may want to think about that for a while. You know, what, was it one of the, one of the writers, one of the scholars of yesteryear say, he took heed unto himself, lest when he preached others into the kingdom, he become a cash out. It is possible to preach others into the kingdom, and you yourself become a cash out, because the spirit of God is not in you. Oh, glory to Almighty God. And he said he's not going to waste time. He, listen to me. Look at me. Look at me. You want to listen to me? Any day, you don't have to worry and take my word. Any day that I know that I am backslidden I have, and I lost the spirit of God, I don't preach. I am not preaching into the kingdom and I go to hell. You think I'm going to waste time on you? It doesn't make sense to help others to go into the kingdom. And you are not right. Saints of God. Having the Holy Spirit's presence dwelling in you is what Bible scholars call anointed. If the Spirit of God is in you, you're anointed. You're anointed. And the presence of God dwells within you. May I say something to you? When our Lord was baptized in water, a Jordan River, huh? the Holy Spirit of God descended upon him with a physical appearance that others could see. Hey, somebody must know that something happened to you. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you must have some physical appearance that something happened to you. You cannot just dead and so 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 and having the Spirit of God. Somebody must see that and hear. Somebody must know. You're going to tell somebody that you're a Christian, but you are not one of the nice type. It's because the Holy Spirit don't come upon you. Holy Spirit come upon you, make nice till you holler. Hallelujah. Glory to Almighty God. Hey, you're going to tell somebody you, you're not the nice type. You better get into the nice type. But if the Spirit of God is not in you, you don't have no noise. <laughs> oh God help me this morning I don't know where think about it just think about it when our Lord was baptized the Holy Spirit came on him and everybody saw there was an evidence you're going to tell me you are filled have you got any evidence what is the evidence and he when our Lord was Tempted by Satan. The Holy Spirit was there to overshadow him and protect him. And led him away into a session of prayer. Because the devil was after him. So the Holy Spirit amen, led him away into the wilderness. Into a session of prayer with his father. And the Bible said when he finished he returned to Galilee in the power of in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't make sense. You're, you're going to say, say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You don't have no power. Yeah, it's so, so word. I'm not moving. Yeah, I'm not moving. Yeah, I'm not moving. If you're going to remove him, you've got to do it through the power of the Spirit of Almighty God. 
it is not your power will remove him it is the power of God that dwells within you oh glory to almighty God somebody hear me so you remember there were some fellows way back want went to cast out the Satan. Amen. But they never had the power of God. And the Bible said Satan stripped them naked and beat them and run them out in the street because and disgraced them because they were trying to do it in the end in their power. You got to have the power, Almighty God. You got to have the power of the Spirit to be able to run Satan. You got to have the power of God dwelling inside of you. When he was tempted by Satan, the Holy Spirit dwelled with him. And when he was finished praying, the Bible said he returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. When our Lord began his public ministry, the very first words he echoed according to St. Luke chapter 4. Verses 18 and 19. The very first words our Lord echoed when he began his public ministry. You remember what it was? He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Lord God. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. You cannot preach the gospel unless you're anointed yea, by the spirit of almighty God. Jesus said the spirit of God was upon him because he has anointed him to preach the gospel. And he has sent him to heal the broken hearted. Anybody hear me this morning? Amen. And to heal the blind and to set at liberty those who are bruised and bound by the powers of hell. Do you hear me? Oh, dear people of God, our Lord's entire ministry was empowered and influenced by the Holy Spirit's presence. Did you hear what I said? He said, our Lord, the creator, Jesus, our savior, his entire ministry was empowered and influenced. Let me say something. Our personality don't scare the devil. Oh, you could dress like puss. You don't mean nothing to Satan. Doesn't matter how you're handsome or how you're pretty. Uh, amen. Satan, don't, don't worry about what Satan they worry about is the presence of God. Is the holy presence of God in your life. That's what Satan is worried about. He's not our doctor. Our doctorship and bishopship. Many bishops and doctors and very, very few pastors left in the world. That's why the church is having so much problem. Because the church don't have any more elders. Not no more pastors. Everybody a bishop and doctor. Oh, the church is tired of doctors. They want some pastors. Some anointed men and women of God. Who fill with the Holy Spirit. Lord God Almighty. To help them. They want them. If, if they are sick, they will, they will know to go to a doctor. When them want healing at church, them come. So don't tell them they come to the doctor when they come to church. A pastor they want. That's why they come to church. It's pastor they want. It's prayer. If they want an injection, then go to the doctor. If they want prayer, then come to pastor. Oh, the church is packed up with doctors and no pastors. People of God, our Lord's entire ministry was empowered and influenced by the holy presence of the Holy Spirit. All through his ministry. All through his ministry. All through his life and ministry, the Spirit of God rested upon him in his entire fullness and power. For thus said the Lord, let me repeat this. I said throughout his entire ministry, the Spirit of God rested upon him in its fullness and power. Fullness and power. For thus said the word of God in St. John chapter 3 and the verse 34. For he whom God has sent, he did not give him the spirit by limit. 
uh, by measure, but in its, in its fullness and power. God don't give you the spirit of God. Thank you, thank you, and half and half. And uh, you have to, whenever God fill you full. Whenever God fill you in a three quarter. Hallelujah, and half. God fill you full. Full up with the spirit of almighty God. He can hold me a mountain and sing glory to God. Ah, glory to God almighty. It was a song I've always heard my late mother sing sometimes. When problems come upon her, she would wake up again. Get up this morning with heaven on my mind. With Jesus who healed the sick and the blind. Like a sea below roll. I have glory in my soul. I wake up with heaven on my mind. Whenever Satan is planning for you. God Almighty allow you to wake up with heaven on your mind. And the glory of Almighty God upon you. He, because God doesn't give you the Holy Spirit half and half. While you're filled, you're full. You, you're not nearly full. So you, you have to come back to consecration. You know, she, she nearly fill. There's nothing, nothing like there's no such thing. You're nearly full. Nothing goes well. Glory to God if you're full, you're full. Hallelujah. Full with the spirit of almighty God. For whom God has sent, he did not send you off and off. Our God has promised that he would baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire. Baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire. Nobody. Nobody can come in contact with fire. Amen. And behave like us. I see some of you behave in this church. You're so, so, so. My God, you walk on fire, you got to holler. Him in fire come your way, you got to make noise. You're going to tell me you have the spirit of God and you're so nice and so, so, so. You must worship God. Open your food mouth and worship God Almighty. Yay! Oh, the anointing just came on me a while ago. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Just so I'm going to be touched by the power divine. Glory to God, somebody. Raise your hand and shout glory. glory. Hey, I've been touched a while ago. Glory to God Almighty. Raise your hand and shout glory. glory. Hey, yeah, yes. Oh, somebody help me. Somebody shout glory. Glory to God Almighty. Oh, glory. To God, our God has promised that He would baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Why I'm never stop at Holy Ghost? Him, him, yeah. Why I'm put fire on it? <laughs> Hallelujah! Holy Ghost and fire. It's a reason. The elder must be a reason why the Word of God said God promised to baptize you. With the Holy Ghost and fire. Eh? And not only fire, but consuming fire. Consuming fire. You know. The Bible tells us that after his resurrection, he breathed on his disciples and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. And he had, he had already cautioned them, though they were called, they were tutored. They were called, you know, and they were tutored. But he said to them, but don't start your ministry until you are filled with the Holy Ghost. I have called you, and I spent years teaching you. I'm about to leave you now. So you are called. Amen. And you are tutored. But, and listen, and I, I have prayed for you, but you must not start your ministry unless you are filled with the Holy Ghost. 
Satan will knock you down clean. Knock you out clean, clean, clean. Amen. You need the Spirit of God Almighty. Our God has promised that he will allow you to be filled. Saints of Christ, saints of God, Christ our Lord lived all his earthly life in the power of the Holy Spirit perpetually. Perpetually. Uh, never was he motivated or moved by any sensuous passion or by any motive of human tendency or opinion. Nobody influenced him but the Holy Spirit. He, in his ministry, was motivated and governed by the power of the Holy Spirit perpetually. Whenever he stands, he stood in the power of the Holy Spirit. I wonder why Jesus said anyone who has not the Spirit of God is none of his. It is, it is, why, think about it. Why has God said, why has he said this? You're a, you're a member of the church, you're a Christian, you're a flock. Yet, why it took time to tell them, if you do not have the spirit of God in you, you are not mine. The human nature that is driven by hate. And grudge and vengeance, uh, amen, had no control over him. But the Holy Spirit of God controlled and directed him everywhere he goes. Some one at the time, he was going to one place and then he told his disciples, it, 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 it must be that I go to such a place. And he go there and as he entered the community, he saw a naked man, naked as a damn barn coming out of the cemetery. He's not there he was going, you know. He had planned the plan. The plan was made for him to go elsewhere. But the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, tell him, change his route and go through such a place because there's a job there for you to do. Sometimes God will allow you to change your route. Amen. You don't understand. If you always drive a certain way to work and one morning the Spirit said, don't drive there, turn around and drive another way for destruction is the way you always go. Hallelujah. You don't understand what I'm talking about. You are governed by the Spirit of God. And he controlled your route. Yes. Can you imagine? Very simple indeed. True religion. True religion does not consist in outward forms or in anything that is ritualistic or external. So true religion does not consist in how we dress. In as much as when we are, we are children of God, we have to dress modestly, you know, decently. But true religion, true religion does not consist in the gown, what me have on. When you see me have on, there's a long old gown and a white gown and them also the bang around purple. And let anybody believe, say, oh, he's a, he's a priest. Huh? I can dress in the gown and I do not have the spirit of God. So the Spirit of God does not consist in the clerical color and the gown that we wear. The Spirit of God dwells within and directs our, directs our, our. True religion does not consist in outward forms or in anything that is ritualistic and external. Yes. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy and love we are. In the Holy Ghost. Ah. In the Holy Spirit. That's, that's, that's it. In the Holy Ghost. Who is given to us. The Holy Spirit is given to us. By Christ as our source of power. And protector. And comforter. If we do not have the Holy Spirit. We are in danger. Anybody at the reach of my voice. You are in danger. Very in danger. Yes. But if there is anyone in the church who do not have the spirit of Christ, you are none of his, saith Christ. Anyone in the church? So how you, could you get in the church without the spirit? Oh, yes. A lot of people can become part of the church and you're not a, you're not a part of Jesus. 
I know these are tough talk. You can be a part of the church physically and I can shake your hand and call you sister and you call me brother. Yet deep down in your heart, you're not converted. Yeah. But if there's anyone in the church who do not have the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. I don't know. Who are you? Or whose you are? But if Christ be in you by his indwelling spirit, that is the Holy Ghost, it takes position of the believer in empowering them for holy living and sacred service, then the carnal nature is dead by reason of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. The carnal man is dead. Because the, uh, amen, the righteous man, the Holy Spirit now takes position. You are born again. Every child of God, you are born, you are converted, you know. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God dwells within you. You are motivated and directed by him. Saints of God, if Christ be in you by the person of the Holy Spirit, though your bodies have to suffer physical death, in consequence of our foreparent sin and transgression, Yet your spirit cannot die. The spirit that God placed in you cannot die. Yet your spirit is instinct. Your spirit is instinct are unalterably intact. That's what I mean with a new and undying nature in Christ Jesus. We have obtained through Jesus Christ a new nature. We are born again and the spirit of God now dwells within us. We are new creatures. We are not the same old fellows we used to be. We don't even go to the places we used to go anymore. And there are times when we are born again and have the new spirit of God in us. Sometimes we have to drop some of the friends we have. Because them friends will take you to hell with them. Um, you got, if you become a Christian, amen, you just have to change your friends in your company. Amen. And even the places you used to go, you cannot go there anymore. Because you're a new creature. You're under new orders. You are now governed by the spirit of almighty God that dwells within you. Oh, well, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 uh, and the verse 11. For if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwell, I live it in you. He who raised up Christ from the dead shall also raise you up. But, but, so when the spirit of God is in you, and even if Mr. Death come your way and, and kill you, amen, and you're buried, and a minister come and said, um, from dust thou art and unto dust thou return, amen, I just the body I'm talking about, amen, the spirit of God no return to no dust because the spirit of God are not dust. So from dust thou art and unto dust thou world, thou will return is not the spirit of God. The spirit that God gives you lives on. Lives on. And although the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit liveth because of righteousness. That life that we have obtained through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, from the second Adam. Romans 8. For if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell or live it in you. Listen, he who raised up Christ from the dead shall also raise you up, raise up your mortal body by the spirit that live it in you. <laughs> it was what? St. John chapter 11. My memory serves me right. Jesus told somebody, Amen. You remember somebody died? And Jesus went and asked, Will you lay him? And the sister said, Master, you're wasting time by this time. He stinketh. Because three days already gone and he begin to decompose. So the sister said, Don't worry, Master, you're late already. <laughs> if you and they were mad, you know, if you go back and read the, the Holy Street, the, the girls were mad with Jesus, you know. 
You know, they were cursing out Jesus, you know. The one who met him said, if you were here, my brother would not have died. A fresh new man, fresh you know. I read it, she ready to raise up Jesus, you know. And Jesus said, calm down. Calm down, Mary. Calm down. Said, your brother will live again. I don't know which theological school Mary went. But and, 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 I don't know, but here, Mary, I know, don't tell me about that. I know that my brother will live again on the last day. And the uh, I know all of that. And Jesus said, calm down, Mary. He said, I am the resurrection. <laughs> Can't see my down. I am. Show me where you lame. Say, hallelujah. Take it easy now. Calm down, Mary. Show me where you, Jesus said, Jesus, Mary said, don't worry yourself, master, we're sorry, but it's late now. We bury him, Jesus said, show me where you bury him. I said, master, I will point, I'll show you, I'm not going with you, by, by this time he stinking, so I'm not going out, I'm not going to smell, not stinking, nothing. And she don't go, she only show him, said, and Jesus went and said, he's here, you're lame, Jesus. And uh, Martha said, yes, Mary said, yes, he said, all right, and you can dress back now. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God Almighty. You can dress back now. I am. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Lazarus. Lazarus. Come here. Hallelujah. And he came out and they said, Jesus said, lose him, take out now, we'll bang around, close up him. Hallelujah. The spirit that <laughs> saints of God observe the change when Jesus comes in the scene. And one of the problems that the guys, the people who were, they were bawling, weeping. You know, those ladies were bawling. You ever, you ever hear a woman bawl? If you aren't bawling, just imply a woman. Man can, man can only cry. Woman holler. <laughs> woman holler and bawl. And those women, you know, those men were employed. They were employed by Mary and Martha, you know, to cry. In those days when they have a debt, they employ people to cry and pay them. So these, la these ladies were there, and, and listen to me, you pay a woman to ball, she going ball. Just be <laughs> because it's work, she working, you know. And those women, listen to me, ladies, them, she, they ball, you know. And when Jesus called Lazarus, they get upset because they're not going to get no pay. <laughs> So Jesus, come and mash up the deal. <laughs> Amen. But, you, you know, Jesus showed them that the Spirit of God cannot die, saints of God. Observe the change when Jesus came. He huh? shall also quicken your mortal bodies. The word quicken there means bring back to life. Listen to me. When, if and when we are dead and the buried, there are some of you at the reason my voice, you have already bought your burial spot. That's good sense. You don't believe that is, that is foolishness. That's good sense. Bought your burial spot and um, when you're gone, you don't want to leave no heap of banger and give those who you have leave behind. So straighten out everything and tell them, say you have your burial spot and such and such a place and so and so on. Set your business properly. Anybody that reached my voice and set your business properly, go set it good. I've sent you the head part. You understand me? Amen. And so don't, don't feel any way if you tell somebody that you, this is your burial spot because you're going to go. But may I say to you, whoever, whichever priest or pastor is going to commit your body to the ground, it is just your body. It is dust to dust. And there are some of you who worry, you, some of you Christian, I read your voice, said, 
you don't like when anybody cremate because I don't look Christian like to cremate. Then why the Bible is ashes to ashes then? <laughs> yeah. Since, since burning now in the Bible, how oh, I'm saying ashes to ashes, you don't know, you know, have to burn before you can become ashes. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Anyone work, it doesn't matter. What is not the, is that you then burning is your body. Hallelujah. Your spirit cannot be burned. Hey, your spirit gone back to God Almighty who has given you. Hey, Amen. They can do what they want to the body. Cremate it, burn it, whatever they want to do. Can I tell you something even more? Don't say I say, but there are several countries of the world where they have to burn. I have, I, I have worked in some countries as field director where they don't have enough land to bury. They don't have any place to have a cemetery, you know. So. Some islands in the sea you don't have anywhere to have a cemetery. Not even to live, much less to bury you. Did you know that? And they have to cremate you. And I've gone to some of these cremation. Listen to me. I was shocked. Right where they're burying, they're burning the dead. There's a guy there selling soft drinks. <laughs> and party and things. <laughs> right beside the body where they're burning. You know, they sell. He put up him stall right there and not sell. Amen. <laughs> and nobody there crying. I was shocked. I, the only one who was there, trouble was me. I never knew when this could happen. Uh, the burning. Because they don't have anywhere to have a cemetery. So don't worry yourself. If, you have, if, the, if the remains have to be burned, or they, they have a nice name, cremate. I don't know what names are cremate. So I'm like ice cream. I don't know what that means. But there, there's nothing they can do with the Spirit of God. God is in control of that. Hallelujah. And when the fullness of time comes, he shall quicken. Your mortal bodies are put back life in it by, by the power of the Spirit who dwelleth in you. I'm going to pull the shutters down. Saints of God, it is not we who live. Hallelujah. It is the Christ of God that liveth in us, O oh people of God. Anybody hear me? It is not we who live. It is the Christ of God who liveth in us. Ah, live. ah. The Christ who lives in us. Our spirit, even when our body is dead, the spirit is alive. For if the spirit of him who raised up, what a powerful scripture to close with. If the spirit of him who raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he shall also raise up even those bodies of ours, even though they yield to the last enemy. And the dust of them shall return to the dust as it were. Yet we shall experience the same. This is tough talk now. Don't stone me. Even though, even though they bury us, listen to me, people, you and I, if the Spirit of God is in us, we shall experience the same resurrection as Jesus Christ. Do you hear me, Clarky? You and I shall receive the experience the same resurrection as Jesus Christ in virtue of the Spirit of God that dwells in us, who will quicken our dead bodies and bring us back to life. Somebody like Job said, I will be somewhere listening for my name. My brother, Job said, If a man die, he shall live again. And Job said, I will be somewhere listening. Job dead long time, you know, mm, thousands of years ago. Yet he said, I will be somewhere listening. And when he calls me, I'm going to answer. <laughs> what, a, what a faith. What a hope. What a faith. What a hope. When God calls me, I am going to answer. Here am I. And he's going to come forth. It's resurrection time. It's going home time. It's resurrection time. But the Spirit of God. Oh, saints of God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. 
through Jesus Christ. Oh. You know, guys, you guys who in the control room, maybe you might, if you can find something that you, you girls and the choir, there's a song that the aids of the Lord sang for me when I was coming on home in my office. It is, once we were clothed in the rags of our sins, wretched and poor, and lost and lonely within. But with wondrous compassion, the king of all kings, in his pity and love, took me under his wing. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Yes! I'm a child of a king. Oh, glory to God. His royal blood now run through my vein. And I, who are wretched and blind and poor, now can sing. Thank God! Thank God! Yeah. Go ahead and sing it. Go ahead and sing it. Lost and lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Oh, yes. yes. I'm a child of the King. Glory. For his royal blood. Thank you, Jesus. Take your time, take your time. Take your time until you get it. Everybody. Uh -huh. Yes. Glory. Uh, yes. Raise your hand and sing it now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Glory. Uh -huh. And I, who was wretched. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes. Yes, man. Glory to God Almighty. His royal blood now blows to my veins. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, I'm a child of the King. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, glory. 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 Oh yes.
sing it. With a heavenly home. I love it. I love it. My sing the song. Holy My Holy Father has made me his own. My God. Now I'm cleansed by his blood and I'm clothed in his love. Uh -huh. And someday I'll sing Glory. with the angels above. Oh, raise your hand again. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm a child of the Quietly. Now I'm a child. Like committing to the hand of Almighty God. Yes, may you be transformed. The Spirit of God dwells within you. May He minister to you. Even in the course of your sleep. May you experience the closeness of his divine presence. Yes. May God bless you. Oh, yes. Yes. You are children of God. And the blessings of God be upon you. May you never be the same. May his Holy Spirit dwell within you. And God's royal blood run through your veins. Glory. Very quietly. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you in your lying down. And the Lord bless you in your getting up. The Lord bless you in her going out. And the Lord bless you in her coming in. My brothers and sisters, peace be within your walls and prosperity within your gates. The Spirit of God lives within you and bless you. And you shall never be the same again. His Holy Spirit will dwell in your inner man. And you become a part of his family. For if we are not gods, then whose are we? Are we wasting time? I bless you this day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, people be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. As you walk close to him. And he lives within you. God bless you. You're dismissed. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes.